How you guys doing? Welcome to another version. Oh, f <laughs> f I'm sorry. How you guys doing? Welcome to Training Game with me and Big John. We're up to episode number two. Johnny, what was number two called again? Well, number two, we're going to have a couple of themes for this one, but this one's called Breaking the Mold. We're going to have a breaking the for the beginning, and it means, uh, you know, it's the part of the topic that we're breaking down. Right. Um, first one was Breaking the Ice. We're, it's sort of a part two to our first uh, episode that we were talking about, kind of getting into a little bit more of the nitty gritty of stuff we wanted to actually discuss um, after introducing ourselves. Hopefully, you know who we are. I am, again, John Kioskarigis, and this is... I'm John DePaulo. And uh, we're happy to be here with you again. Um, today, we're going to talk about a couple of things that we are both pretty familiar with, okay? And oh it, is the, it is the personal yeah. training world. And I know that you are, <laughs> we have a lot of passions for this, uh, for this type of thing, because I've done it for a while. I have no, I've stopped for quite a bit now. At what, 15 years, I haven't done it. As a trainer. As a trainer, yeah. I did train uh, someone for like, that needed to get in shape for a film because they needed to gain excess amount of, um, muscle. But what I always tell anyone that ever comes to me for a diet or comes to me for, you know, personal training advice, I always ask them one question that's very honest. It's not derogatory. It's not mean in any way, but I say, Hey, if, if you're going to follow this, I need you to follow it completely in its entirety or else it's not going to not work for work. you. Yeah. And that's the simplest thing I can say. There's no, there's no set formula that says, follow my system. I need to tell you exactly what to do. I need to tell you exactly what to yeah. eat. You need to follow what I'm telling you only because everyone else is wrong. It's not true. Everyone's body's different. This is the stigma we're trying to get away from. There's no top athlete or trainer that's gonna say, I'm gonna get you to where you need to be. Yes, that is, that is absolutely true in those aspects of like, I need you to get a better jump shot or I need you to get a better, you know, uh, 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 whatever, like running. Uh, running for football players, distance, right? Yeah. So what I want to talk about is how do you engage with it? Because you're still you're still doing uh, personal training. I know you have evolved now to where you're into like kinesiology. You're into a lot of corrective work, but let's break it down in the beginning. So personal training, right? Okay. How do you feel about how people should engage in finding a good personal trainer? What makes a good personal trainer for you? Well, the opposite of what most people think, the way you look. The way you look doesn't speak about what you know. So I would say, coming from a gym perspective, say there's a Miss Katie Smith. She wants a trainer. She's in the gym. Sometimes you got to observe, look around, look, watch, watch, look at the way the trainer is. They're called cues. Look how he's, his rapport with his client. Is he constantly on his phone? Hey, hey keep going. 10, 9, Hey, you're doing great. He's not watching a form. It's making a connection. <clears throat> so attentiveness. I would say from a client's perspective, look at a potential client. Look at how attentive he is or she is. That's number one. Number two, I guess you might want to observe their program design. For example, I seen a guy one time with a pregnant woman on the ground. He's making her do push-ups. That struck you as, it strikes, I looked at you kind of strange, like looking up, <laughs> kind, of strange, kind of strange in that way where I'm, I don't I'm want saying, to say nothing. you know, why would someone, why would someone do that? And is it, in your opinion, is that something that is normal or is it abnormal? Because I would think from a perspective that it's a little abnormal. Well, ignorance is normal, right? I guess we can all <laughs> say that in some form, right? <laughs> ignorance is bliss. Uh, yeah, where they say, if ignorance is bliss, why isn't there more happy people out there? That's an old one. <laughs> It shows how far I go back. Hey, but, we're learning. But some some of the trainers too, um, I noticed that they're very repetitive. And you'll watch them with a client, you'll see the same program design, but you look at the client, they never really progress. So is it really working for them or is it complacency? He's happy, don't he or she's happy giving this to their client. The client's not saying nothing. But sometimes an outsider looking in can see a lot more than the person who's actually performing the workout session. Why do you think the client would be afraid to speak up in that way? Is it something that, you know, for the general public, because I know this question would come up, is it something that is, <clears throat> you know, and also feel free, we, you know, I always want to um, approach this in a way where, you know, if you want to drop any comments in our, in our sections, feel free to do that because if you feel like you disagree with something, we definitely want to hear about it. Um, we would love to answer and engage with our audience that way. But 
Speaking of that, I feel like a question that would pop up is, you know, maybe I feel intimidated to say something to my, you know, personal trainer because he's organized this for me and I don't want to step on his toes. Like, how do you feel? How can I mitigate that? Uh, well, it's a twofold answer. Number one, on, on a note earlier, if you guys got questions about what you want to see or ideas, what you want me and John to talk about, drop a comment as well. Absolutely. We'd love to talk back. So how could you feel what you don't know? How could a client approach a trainer about a topic they don't even know? They might be maybe delusional of thinking that they're progressing physically. They might be in more touch with the mental aspect. No matter what he's giving me, it doesn't matter. I'm here, I'm moving, and I feel a little better. But do you look better? That's a really good point you bring up because it's almost like a, um, I don't know, I would, I would think about it as like, a, not like a power trip, but in a way where that someone has a power over that other person because they don't, they're not educated enough in that field. Yeah, it, it really is. And how do you feel about when, let's say, they do have you know the bravado or the capability to say, "Hey, this is not working." How often do you see that happening in the field that you're in? Uh, I've never, to me, never happened. I've never seen that go on between a trainer and a client before, but I'm sure it exists. It has to. There's I always that one person. Yeah, who will make the trainer feel like just when they think they have the answer, the client changes the question. You know. I just feel like there's this, this, I don't know, when I was doing personal training, I was uh, part of these bigger corporations. Um, one of them actually folded, but aside from that, uh, I was part of these bigger corporations that would say, I'm here now because I love fitness. Okay. I want to help people. Right. And the first thing they sat me down in that room and said to me was, okay, we have to sell this amount of package in this amount of time. And we have to get these amount oh, of sessions because gosh. it's going to be great for us. And Hey, make sure to push these memberships and Hey, look, you're going to get a bonus if you do this. And it was sort <laughs> of, that was the first version I got for myself. And yeah. I could see how much it, how passionate oh. you are about it. But that's the version I got for myself where I said, there's something wrong here. Oh man. I, you want me to add to that? Absolutely. It's the reason why I'm independent, put it that way. So when I when, when I was younger, going back like seven, eight years ago, uh, I needed a job as a trainer, but in the city where there's more money. Stay away from Brooklyn, right? So when I got out there, I didn't know what was ahead of me because they weren't as advanced as this. And they wanted you every month to do a quota for those who don't know what that is, so you got a gym, you got members, you got clients, and you got a, a, a personal training director who his or her higher up says, listen, we need 20,000 a month amongst your 10 trainers. So go find them, round them up, and maybe get two grand per person. In the beginning, it's all fun and games. You know, it's competition, it's cool. It's a reminder that you could sell something to someone that you've earned their trust and there's reciprocity she's paying and you're providing. It's a great feeling. But when you really, really love your body the way you love to train hard to attain that feeling all the time, it gets in the way, bro. It definitely gets in the way. You start feeling like you, you don't feel as good. Almost like you feel, do you feel like you're deceiving people? Mentally fatigued. Because to chase that, feeling to overcome that is to train hard how do you do that when you got 20 clients because they have a quota so the quota starts making you irrit like very irritated you know you start saying man everyone else does this it's no no mystery let me establish clientele 10 or 20 people let me rightfully earn their trust rightfully not just to leave let me convince them why you should still come with me because we're in a journey no matter where we take it we take it together right? Take them out to a studio, you'll get paid a lot more money. This, this is no, this is not rocket science. This goes on. But that's why I can't be subjected to a gym. Because they have that over me all the time. I don't mind doing it. But every month it just weighs you and weighs you and weighs you. And they want you to stay on the floor to work until you have that number. Yeah. And it kind of, I guess it also drains the attention span that you want to devote to one person at one given time. It's a, almost like a work overload. Why do you think I only want to have six clients? I can't give the seventh one. I can give the six, five, four, three, two, and one. Absolutely. And I mean, when I was running through this, this gambit, I was sort of uh, skeptical and I said to myself, okay, you know, I've been, I competed in one or two shows mm -hmm. before. And I got involved in the personal training and I said, okay, this goes against everything that I believe in as someone trying to maintain adequate health for another human being. Because now it's not, 
you know, you have me helping you. Correct. But now in the back of your head, you have this pressure from these corporations that are saying, okay, you must not hit this quota. Okay, you must not hit these numbers. And here's a little incentive for you. But at, this, at the same time, as you're working through someone with this other client, you know, you, like you said, you have about 10 more listed for that same, you know, two day period, right? Or, or even one day period, if it's, if it's a really busy gym. Hit. And it weighs on you. And it, it almost makes you not want to be associated with something that you don't believe in anymore, which is why you would go independent, why myself, I just left because I didn't believe it. Yeah, make sure attention span avert, go away. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to a, a point that we were trying to talk about before where it's just training the appropriate people, like athletes yes, and stuff. You yes, find more yeah. that they're more dedicated. I know for myself, when I help train people going for either a fitness competition or just getting on set for a movie, yeah. um, you know, I wanted to make sure that I gave what I needed for them to do and they would listen because they wanted it bad. They wanted to transform themselves. They were gonna pay attention to it. Yeah, and it man. wasn't something that I said, okay, let me go look into a book or a flex magazine or like, you know, one of these old, uh, you know, encyclopedias and not all of them are bad, but I'm just saying that I feel like people go to those and say, yep, this is going to work. I'm going to take this and this and this, and I'm going to use the same formula anyways. Say go to. And then yeah. here you go. That's, yeah. that's going to be your diet. Okay. You okay with that? And it doesn't make any sense for me because everyone's body is going to be different. So I knew that the people I had gotten were like, okay, <laughs> let me take a look at you. Let me assess how you are. Do you have any uh, pains that you need to worry about? I kind of become part of your family in a way where it's like, I need to know what you're eating. I need to yeah. know what your diet's like. Yeah. I need to know what you what you don't like to have. I'm you not going to say- You need going, a relationship with yeah, them. Yeah, you need yeah. a relationship, a personable relationship. And I feel like that's gone it's with, gone with today's window. type of personal training. <clears throat> a lot of people will not admit this, but they need the trainer for sometimes a friendship. No one's going to say, hey, can I pay to be your friend, please? No one's going to say that. But- a lot of goals went out the window where it starts, hey, could you get me to look like this? In two, three weeks, two, three weeks in, sometimes you know their blood type. It becomes personal. Do you like that sort of a connection better? I like a combination. I like to know who I'm dealing with, why some things happen, why he or she might struggle with their workout. Oh, that's right, she has anemia. I could factor that in. Can't factor what you don't know. I might have a client who had, uh, I don't know, he called mono when he was young. And once in a blue, of course, is chronic fatigue if you got a certain amount of mono. So if he's dying out in the workout, I'm not going to take it personal. Like maybe he's not eating like, like I told him to eat. Maybe he's not sleeping. He or she. He or she. Now, what motivates you to having a good, what's a good client for you? Or just who's someone that is, I guess, mentally stimulating or, you know, you just, shouldn't be afraid to ask the questions? You just said it. One who magnifies the best version of me. So let me give you an example. Yeah. I had a, I had a, had, past tense. God, I wish I still had a greatest client that I could ever have because of how athletic she was. I actually don't know the story, which is Yeah, cool her name, I can't even tell you her name. I don't even, she's probably not watching this, but <laughs> Carly Berger, B-E-R-G-E-R, Car Carly Berger. And um, I remember she was pawned off to me from another trainer who was leaving and he was pretty much disseminating his clients even between the trainers. He goes, I'm going to give you my best clients because I know you work well with people who bring the best out. So I had her and by looks, she didn't look like the girl who could do pull-ups or push-ups. Just from like a first assessment of like, you know, face value. Initial glance. Yeah. Oh no. You either say, oh, he's, he's physically capable or he's not physically capable. She looked incapable. This woman outworked me mentally. Jogging into my, the recesses of my brain, what can I give her next? But what can I give her that actually constitutes to what she wants to do? Not just something that's challenging. Is It's challenging, but is it helping her get where she has to get to? And that's where program design comes in. She was so good that I didn't like training on 6 a.m. That's when she was available. But the more I trained her, I loved 6 a.m. Because I knew what was ahead of me. It was a challenge. It was strong personality. You don't approach this all the time. So when you have it, you want to harness it, embrace it. Well, it's because you're passionate about fitness and you're passionate about, you know, this is, this is a huge, huge part of your life. You it know, is, and, yeah. and it's something that you really revel in. You know, I feel like now it is my life. <laughs> absolutely. It's yeah. my whole life. And that's, that's what I find. I take offense to when I hear or see things, you know, when I'm in a gym. 
And it's just that face value that just gets so, you know, misconstrued where it's like, oh, you don't look like you know what you're doing. How would you know? You know? What makes them say that by I, initial glance? Initial guy? It usually is initial glance or it usually is because, you know, it's it's that whole stigma sure. of being in the gym. You want to work out your biceps. You're going to wear like the the most stringiest cutoff you can, like something like this, like a tank top. But, you know, for, it goes different ways. You know, a bodybuilder may look at it because he needs to actually make the mind muscle connection, yeah. know what he's working out. He needs to see what he's doing. Whereas it's other people where it's, I know what I'm doing because I'm wearing a cutoff shirt and it's okay to do that, but don't then take that knowledge and say, I know what I'm doing to someone that's actually needing your help. No. And then saying, I know, I know exactly what to do for you when clearly it's just something that's a visual perception. I understand. Yeah. I, I see that a lot too. And those are the first people that hate when you approach them to teach them something. Why it, you, it, well, I'll tell yeah. you, I understand. <laughs> you, we're making that mind yeah, muscle yeah, yeah. connection already. I see it. It's because you don't want to disturb his level of delusion. Not that he doesn't want to break, he or she, sorry, doesn't want to break out of it. They may not know how. So anyone who comes remotely close to them with an iota amount of knowledge is a threat to them. It's a, it's a threat. It's exposure. No one likes being exposed, right? Why do you feel like people in this business especially have such a fear of being exposed? Is it something that, you know, I know you've spoken with a couple of people or at least tried to understand that perspective because you never know what people have going on in their lives. But I feel like it's a, it's a pattern of Big ego yeah. and it's a pattern of an unwillingness to be wrong, mm -hmm. you know, in general. I feel like it's just a fear of all that. It's a fear. Some people don't know how to change. Some people, some people are in denial that they need to change. You can't change what you don't believe is wrong with you, right? So a lot of people just don't think it's wrong. They think it might be right for whatever reasons that they have. That's how they feel. Then there's ones that want to break out of it, that struggle. They don't know how to do it. So they're kind of wavering in the middle, but it's still offensive to them if you expose them and say, I think you could do this a little better. All their respect. Sometimes there's no way to, 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 propose it to them they just get mad you know this whole thing is making me think about when i was uh first looking at all the greats you know of the people that i looked up to and i i come from a i'm not gonna say an era of that but i have always looked up to you know arnold, arnold and uh, franco colombo and frank zane and um you know all these guys of that era yeah and they all had a common thread that i have seen uh, is that no matter how on top you are and how great you are, they always have a willingness to help. And it's because- humble. Very humble. Yeah, it's that humble attitude that I feel like is yeah. sort of, I don't see you anymore. It's, yeah. it's, it's become, and I've competed in about five shows already, okay? And I've won my share of contests. And only in certain shows you go back there and there's this backstage camaraderie and it's amazing, but you have a lot of these top shows where it's just a, I get it, you're there to compete. And I, I'm a fierce competitor too. I'm, I'm there because I want to win, but at the same time is, you know, I'm not going to go break down doors if I lose. <laughs> no, I'm, already, I'm already in that, in the best shape. And that's yeah. kind of what people <laughs> stray away from. But it's this, this, this ego, especially when people are like that, or like myself, we're training in the gym. Yeah. Well, yeah, you don't want to be disturbed during your set times. That's fine. Okay. You're in your zone. But if someone's asking for help, not in an arrogant way, what's the problem with going over? Is it, does it lose a piece of your manhood? I mean, this is what I feel like happens. I feel like, you know, <laughs> the lower region gets smaller, you know, for, for the male specimen. And I feel like they, they have to elongate that in a way where it makes them feel on top. Well, you don't have to do that because the greats haven't done that. Yeah. And I feel like that's what differentiates yeah. being great and being mediocre is that you can win 50 contests and you can be the most arrogant person in the world and think you're on top. Is yeah. that really going to mean anything? But a lot of the people in public that need the help buy into that yeah. and go to those people. And they're like, oh, he must know what he's doing. He's got 50 championships. Yeah, but Can't stand is that. he really putting his best effort towards you or is he doing it for his ego? That's what I have to ask. I got so many names in my head right now. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. It's, and like I, me. But like I said, even, okay, even personal training. Let's take it back there a second. So if I, I'm working on a client, a potential client, 
and they had a certain type of trainer, even though he or she did the wrong thing by them or didn't do the right thing by them, they're still bought into that idea. You, you understand? So that trainer could just discard them one day or maybe they discard them, whatever it was. It's hard to buy them back to see the real way how I personally feel personal training should be. You don't always give them what they want. You give them what they need. A lot of people forget to do fitness assessments. As Explain that. Well, an assessment is like a setup before you do a personal training session. Say, I don't know you. Hi, okay. Johnny Muscles. I'm John. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you ever had a trainer before? It's part of my rapport with them. Yeah. And they usually say, yes. Well, what has he or she done for you? This, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, I hear push-ups. I'm going to want to see how you execute a push-up. I'm going to see if you're going to do, do the right, right way of motion biomechanically. If I see something's wrong, I can depict it and I can work on those muscles independently. That's program design. You see, it's not what you tell me. It's what I need to see between my two eyes right here. I got to execute you on the ground, put you through a push-up, maybe through a freehand squat. Let me see if your knees internally rotate when you're coming down. They call a knock knee. Let me see if your shoulders are hyperextending your spine. Little things like that. I look at that. And those are the types of things that you really kind of have to look for if you're needing to make a good assessment. Because what I've seen mostly is that a lot of these trainers don't do that. Johnny. They'll go right into a workout. They'll go right into a specialized machine. Hey, let me get you into a full body. I hear quite often. Let me get you into a full body workout to get you adjusted. Johnny, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Your car makes lots of noises, right? You suspect what it might be, but you quite don't know. Do you just go on speculation? Or do you bring it to a mechanic? He puts it on a lift, looks underneath it. Okay, let's bring it down. I suspect it's a leak in this valve or whatever. Put it on a computer, a computerized motor or something. It gives you a code. Oh, it's a Catalina converter. How do you know unless it's not diagnosed? That's a really good point that you brought up with that. Because I, I as a person would not think of it that way. But it makes sense in my brain by you saying that. Because you're creating something for someone. You're creating an illusion. As a trainer, if I tell you how to do a bench press and you're driving off of your neck muscles the wrong way, and you're a basketball player, let's just say for argument's sake. Yeah. And I tell you, stop overextending your shoulders, retract your scapula more. What does that mean? Okay, well, you're a basketball player, right? Correct? Yeah. If you want to pass the ball to the next person on the court, how would you pass that ball? It depends. Either a chest pass. It's so either if it's too far, you need to throw over, it. I'd imagine you're yeah. not going to go underhand, but you, you're known to go over or you're going to fire off your hip, mm. right? Does that make more sense? That does make more sense. I so you're creating an illusion for a person pertaining to what hobby they like, passion they embrace, job they do, whatever it is. You see, this is great for me too, because a lot of the things that I'll bring up, you know, maybe I won't know the answer to. And, and I ask these questions because even as a general audience, I feel like it could be beneficial to understand where your mentality is coming from as yeah. someone that, that has done this and is continually doing this and researches this every day and, and is the essence of who you are as part of your life. Because I even just gained something new by thinking of it that way. Of thinking of maybe like a pass would be the, you know, you're not thinking about it in the moment, but as like a hyper extension of a certain muscle and you don't and know that kind of stuff. You don't know what you're feeling. You just know you want to push the weight from point A to point B. Are you in touch with what's maybe not working properly or overacting versus what's underactive? Not really. Not until you get an imbalance and your neck starts to hurt, your lower back starts to hurt, you start looking into things going through a corrective sort of fashion. So you hire a corrective exercise specialist maybe, right? Yeah. Or you ask a friend who, who's a physical therapist who knows what's going on. But can I tell you one thing I always ask a client when I first meet them? Yeah, I wanna hear this. I say, let me ask you, let me just ask you a random question. Do you have a photographical memory? They look at me and go, why? It'll help me understand how to train you. That's some interesting. Of them, some of them say yes. Some of them say, I, I, I think I do. I'm like, well, we'll know when we, when we talk more. But if you know, if you have, would you let me know? Yeah, I have one. When, when, you, when you train them, you want to paint a picture for those kind of people. Because that's how they process things quicker. That's how I am too. You make a visual connection with their mind and muscle. Absolutely. And then you, and then you begin from there. Yes. Now, what are the telltale signs from you when you see a personal trainer that knows what he's doing and see a personal trainer that doesn't know what he's doing while you're in the gym. You're not training them. You just kind of, you just observing. There and you observe it. Yeah. I've seen that quite, quite often. I know you have. So what do I see? Yeah. What makes you look at someone and say, okay, this guy actually knows what he's doing. He's and got, he's got their client in good hands or one that says, 
I don't. Uh, I know this guy definitely doesn't know what he's doing because of so and so. I see an irritated man once he sees I've seen him. I get that look, but I see like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I see a total disengagement sometimes. I'm like, this guy's in his phone. He's checking his basketball parlay from last night, and Mrs. Jones is squatting for dear life. She looks like her face is ready to touch the floor. What's going on here? So I look at that. And it's comical to me, and I don't really. Be too hyper vigilant. I return to whatever I'm doing. But Does it offend once, you when you when you see that? I got past that point. To be honest with you, I'm way past it. I realize it's going to happen. You can't change it. It is what it is. I'm kind of numb to it. But honestly speaking, when I do see it initially, it irritates the shit out of me. But it, then I return back to that numbness. I'm like, it is what it is. And that irritation I get, it comes from the passion that you have for wanting to help someone in need of help that's looking for it. The irritation comes from trying to tell them in the past, this might be the wrong approach when people don't want to listen to you, become numb. Why is ego such a big problem? <clears throat> I, I think it's I generational, just... to be honest with you. Going back to what you said before, yeah. you said to me, why back in the day that some of the greatest were like, they were like heroes, they were humble about it, they were on the, help. on the throne. You're climbing up to meet me? <laughs> that, that didn't exist. If you get it, you're a man, you deserve it. It's more humility, right? more people being humble. I think personally it's generational. That's what I think. You can only, you can, something you can only earn being humble. You can't, you're not born with it. No, that's absolutely true. And Parents were harder on the kids hmm. in good and bad ways. Some bad, some bad. But in good and bad ways, it, it, it instills character. It makes you, forces you to see things and not take them for granted. Because there's repercussions, right? Just opens sure. up your. It broadens the way you 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 perceive things. You take things in. If that's yeah. absent from one's life, they you got the opposite, hypersensitive. I just took that comment that you made again for a second. I was just dwelling on it for a minute because you said the generational aspect of it, and yeah. I just started to think about that and say, okay, you know, that does that does make a lot of sense because you know, obviously, as generations evolve different things become more prominent. You yeah. want to see something on TikTok now, you know, where yeah. this generation is kind of different than, yeah. it's not wrong, it's not bad. It's just, it's an evolution of how things are, technology, times. Right. I mean, when I say that, I'm not bashing them. I'm just bashing what was lacking within their lifestyles yeah. that makes them think this is normal. I don't think it's normal personally. I think it's good to be strong within yourself too. I'm not saying they're weak people, but they probably could have things instilled in them to make them stronger, right? Yeah, I agree, especially, just going back to that, you know, I, I almost think now people look at it as, oh, I've become so-and-so, I've won so-and-so, it's a responsible thing to do now to help people. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like the instinctual part of them saying, yeah, I, I would like to give this back because it's been so helpful for me. I wish I had someone like that helping me at that time in my life when yeah. I couldn't have help, you know, whether it's getting into the gym or whatever it is. That's where I'm at right now. I was always a person who looked for help and it was always there for me. So kind of like now the whole podcast is giving back. So yeah. what do I do? I approach the young guys. I let them know I put up good content on social media if they want to follow me. But if I see something off here or there, I let them know I'm a trainer. A trainer can never stop being a trainer. I'm always going to find things wrong. But we're the first to see things right and let you know, hey, good job, man. Right? So if someone were to want to approach you um, for, you know, to be trained, what would you, I guess, recommend be like a, a telltale pattern of someone that's going to be helpful to you rather than someone that's going to be not helpful to you by asking certain questions? I guess, what questions would you like to hear or that you would want a response from in order to have someone be a client? When you make a program design, you evolve anatomy. <laughs> Do you actually look and see what's wrong? Can you fix it? Please don't waste my time if you can't. They don't have to, listen, they don't, John, they don't ask enough questions. Anything would be happy to me at this point. It's more like, what time should I be there? Uh, do you want a list of my diets? That, I know it's a help huge too. problem too, is that time where it's, hey, I'll be there tomorrow at seven and then not being responsible. These are adults. Oh, that do this yeah. <laughs> and i know it's a disappointing thing for you but i wanted you to talk a little bit about that and touch up on it about not the need to be punctual about your time but it's about 
thinking about the other individual's time that he's putting into you that you're not acknowledging because you have now asked for this. Yeah. And you've the one that asked. It's not the other way around where you ask them. Correct, yeah. How do I feel about that? Yeah. I feel it just, it lacks character. You're showing what kind of character you are. Think of it this way. If it's a man, he's not a man of his word. If it's a woman, she's not living up to her word either. So I look at that and the first thing I see is you have not much respect for yourself. It starts with you. By you being becoming a spirit into thin air, you're not communicating with me. It's a reflection on your character. Yeah, I don't look much at that. I, I don't really take them with the same amount of respect. Well, I don't take them as truthfully. So and it's it, it, honestly it segues into that the next part of our topic, which is the toxic nature of the business versus actually helping yourself with health. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like it's not really touched up on too too much because it's people don't want to go there because they're afraid to expose or talk about it. Exposure. Yeah. But I feel like the business itself has gotten toxic to a point where like we were talking about, it is become about ego. It, it has become about dollar signs. It has become about making the corporation mm -hmm. you're working for money. And all these ads come out. I, I, I will tell you this one ad that I saw. I couldn't, <laughs> it was the most hilarious thing of my life, okay? I'm not saying this doesn't happen, right. but you have a runner that's running with her friend and she makes it to the finish line wherever that runner is first and the other one you see and it's a close-up of them and they're running and running and jogging and they're out of breath and then it's like oh, okay their friend's waiting there to give them something and what is it it's it's like a miller light a beer <laughs> <laughs> and i look at that and i started wow. I, what I, a started, reward. <laughs> I started laughing because i'm just like okay now most of the public is is going to be like you're not actually going to have a beer after you just ran you're just trying to you know justify why yeah, you ran exactly like wow and i'm thinking to myself okay this is a perfect example of a advertisement a commercial that's saying hey everyone after you've had a hard day reward yourself because you've worked your ass off so hard which you can do but the person just came from a run let's give them some beer how that's going to be great how do i feel about that i thought it was hilarious it, it's hysterical but it's a little degrading to fitness too that's that's exactly my point. It's that toxic nature versus actual health. Well, you know what? It doesn't have to be toxic, John. It depends on who's listening to it and how they're interpreting it. If you want to be lazy by nature, that's a perfect way out, right? But if you know I could put two and two together, two and two is four, how the hell are you having that? After training, I get it. Maybe there's a day off, you watch a fight, you what you, you what your friends <laughs> have a beer, man. Yeah, your I metabolism is firing. It's firing. I said, treat yourself to a beer. Don't make it part of your daily routine. Don't do that. Yeah. You understand? But when people are trying to pass that like it's okay, yes. it's almost like, man, should I say this? I'm going to say it anyway. Absolutely. Pl Planet Fitness saying it's okay. We serve bagels on Monday and it gets better. We serve pizza on Tuesday. That's my reward. They want to make you, and I get it. I get the whole idea. You're we don't, we don't judge. Going. We don't judge. So you want to be heavy. You want to, you want to treat your diabetes and make it worse. Or high cholesterol. Have some pizza. No problem. But make sure you use a treadmill tomorrow morning. Thank you. When you punch in. I could never train people in that gym for that reason. It, it goes against what I believe. Exactly. It, it, that's what, that's the whole thing is that you're. They couldn't afford me anyway. <laughs> 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 well, it goes back to that is that the affording part is is so it, it's it's more of like your time. Am I wrong by saying that? By saying like, you know, the affordability is just like my time is so valuable for you that oh, you just man. like you wouldn't be able to even have my my attention for something like that. Well, you it's just, so ludicrous. Well, you just said it. My mind. So my client, I port into them. A like computer port, charge your battery, charge your phone. I pour it into them. John. Do you know the kind of mental fatigue when I'm done with them? Oof, like, like a phone on 40%, I gotta charge. I can't be 40% for client number two. I gotta be 100, they're paying me, mm. they're trusting me. So I wanna build on that trust. I wanna build until it's built. I can Establish totally it. understand that, because that would, that that makes sense, I feel like, in any aspect. You know, whereas you're, 
digging into like script lines or you're digging into like character work or you're digging into, you know, fitness or you've just done a hard session, you kind of, you have to give your body a recharge, your mind a recharge. You do. You You, you know, nothing in excessiveness is going to be healthy for you. Well, also there's money involved too. So people are paying you money. They're relying on you to remember, I work nine to five. Yeah. Doesn't mean I don't got a goal, but when I come out of work, I'm driven enough to come here because I know I paid you. But can you meet me 50% and lift me up? You got to have that in you. It's called charisma. You got to have that in you. And you're saying also like going back full circle to the corporations in the beginning when we were talking about saying, you know, they they have these 10 clients for you. It defeats that purpose because you're overcharged now. You have oh, to do five saying. or yes. 10 clients in the same day. Yeah. How can how can any human possibly do that day, out, day in and day out? You're going to get burnt out. Well, they, don't, fast. they don't see that. They see... You're a selling opportunity because apparently they're doing that because they've seen something they like and they want to just get the most out of you. And unfortunately, this is the truth. When you're all tired and beat up five years later, they don't care. And they bring in fresh blood. Right. And they just keep sucking. Sucking. <laughs> you know, it's, until you, you grow mean, on. It's like a until you become chokehold, a physical chokehold. Until you say, listen, there's only a way out of this chokehold. And I'm, I'm not MMA certified, but I got to take my people out of this gym. And become independent right and i feel at the same time is that you know just for someone new that's trying to get involved into um getting in a gym yeah. a lot of this is off-putting you know let's say yeah. you do know this not just by listening here and not the, you know saying that we know all the answers with this stuff but it's like an opinionated thing that we've both lived through consistently over time absolutely. years and years and years and years absolutely and yeah. you know it, let's say people do know this information that we do, right? It's like, okay, I know this. Why would I even want to go to a personal trainer now? I want the help. Where can I turn to? Where do I go? What do I do? Sometimes people do that. It's not what it, they do know what they're doing or they develop an understanding. But guess what? I know a lot of people from being in the industry, they need drive. I've had people say, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you money just to set up my program design, train me assess me you know what i need what do you want this for sir i'm just curious while i work nine to five i work long hours the last thing i want to think about is how to structure my program design so i'll pay you you take care of that i'll just show up i had that quite a few times i kept those people more in the beginning because now i know that normally i'm going to pour it into you but now they're telling me i need 50 percent from you i might pour it and give someone 25 percent. i got to give them more so I got to be ready for them. So I keep them in the front of the battle line. You understand? And gradually, I come down. Depends on the person. Mm. The easiest client, I might be all correct at work, I'll put it to the end. You know, even thinking about that, maybe it would be beneficial for these big corporations and businesses that would have personal trainers on their roster yeah. to do their own assessing with clients first and, and put them in a priority list and then give them out equally because it would make uh, health the the paramount solution yeah. that they want and then everything else you're still going to gain money off of it yeah. i just feel like that's that would be a common fantastic sense. thing and common sense like yeah. you just said but it is a lack of understand time and desire and laziness yeah because they don't actually care about the health no yeah, as we listen for a siren to go by <laughs> okay but hope you're okay <laughs> yeah i know it's like it's part of the new york atmosphere Right, even though we're not. If you don't hear a siren or a gunshot, you know you're not in the right place. (laughs) (laughs) But you know, going back to that, I feel like it's just laziness on their part, and and it makes me validate the fact of, you know, you don't actually care about my health. Me as saying because I've lived through that, but to the common person, they may think otherwise. Where I would say you don't actually care about my health; you care about dollar signs. Absolutely. Can I take it a step further too? I would only put this in the real high upscale gyms like Equinox or Reebok, I would say, let's take it a step further. We don't know exactly our, well, we know our trainers are certified, we know that much, but we don't know how they act on demand for like someone who needs corrective work. What's corrective work? It's anatomy, right? Who knows best, a physical therapist. And that's why I say an upscale gym. One who could hire either a PTA, physical therapy assistant, what I'm going to school for, or a physical therapist. This way they could prescribe what the person needs as to put them through a mechanical fitness assessment, point it off to the trainers. Guys, 
you don't have to do all this, but make sure this gets gelled in to your program, mm. you know, compounded in with your program design. Otherwise, they're not going to be fixed. You might take them to a different level, but certain muscles might be overactive, some might be underactive. Let's balance them out. Do you also feel like choosing the right atmosphere for someone just getting involved in fitness is a good thing? I think it is because I know the right atmosphere for me works and some, you know, yeah. even to this day, atmospheres don't work. I need to get mentally motivated and mentally <clears throat> stimulated to be in there. Yeah. But also I want to know that everyone's equal on my same page. And there's only a couple of those for me that do it. And one we sport quite a lot, which is Bev's. Yeah. And, you know, it's always been a fantastic gym for me over the years. It still always will be. It kind of reminds me of the old gold, even though I've never gotten a chance to yeah. be there. Yeah. Been to the one in Venice, which has the same vibe. Great but vibe, right? It's amazing. But I feel like the, the classic old school places are sort of gone, you know, where Bev's is... <sighs> kind of the only one that's remaining long time you know but do you feel that every person needs to get involved in a space that they're comfortable going to but has the right value like equipment wise don't just go somewhere because it's <clears throat> advertised don't just jump in somewhere because you know okay fine you maybe have groups that go into these classes together but i feel like that is going to be mentally motivating for people to take that first step yeah you know hey i work a nine to five you know what, I may not have enough time, may not have enough money, I have like two kids at home, something like that. Let me let me take a look and research this gym. I'll walk in there and see how I feel because yeah. I like the people. I like I like the atmosphere. Well, in their defense, I give them I give them a thumbs up for one thing. Those people, the first people who find it hard to get in, they go online, YouTube. Now, is 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 it wrong? No. But could it be could it be maximized as your full potential? You don't know what these people are giving them. They're making you move. They're making you motivated. They're, they're, they're implying movement. But how do you know it's good for you? But I give them that credit that they're actually starting with that. They're taking that prelude to that bigger step into the gym. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's in their defense. And I feel like that's a great way to close episode number two. Um, this is like a two-parter for our intro. Uh, we really uh, hope you guys enjoyed our talk. Um, like I said, leave any comments, leave any questions that you have in our section below. Uh, like it, subscribe to us, Training Gain Podcast. We are really excited to share the rest of this content with you throughout the course of the season. We're going to have close to about 20 episodes um, and, uh, and have a couple more seasons in the works. But my name is John Kioskarigis. You can follow me on Instagram at John underscore Kioskarigis. And uh, John, how do you plug yourself? My name is John DePaolo. You can find me on unique underscore physique 23. And please, um, you know, follow us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, uh, Spotify, all that social media cool stuff. Um, but we'll be seeing you all next week.